Good evening, heroes and heroines, and welcome to practice program again. C, in which we're going to be doing Cinderella's config file stuff. <clears throat> Just a few bits of administrivia before we start. Um, and the first bit isn't really administrative actually, it's just a bit of a, a mention of uh, a bit of sadness that happened last yesterday. Um, you can see here that I'm listening to Mark Hollis's self-titled album here. Uh, sadly yesterday on the um, 25th of February 2019, um, Mark Hollis died. Um, I'm not sure what he died of. I'm not sure if that's been reported. Um, but yeah, I haven't really prepared any sort of like, um, I don't know, eulogy or anything or sort of dedication to him. I just sort of want to mention it because uh, he's one of my favorite musicians and it's just like uh, sad times. He actually retired from music about 20 years ago. This is the this is the final album that he made. Is his first self-titled album. He released this in nineteen ninety eight. It's like twenty twenty one years ago. Twenty one years ago this month actually. Um, well, recently he did. I think he did one piece of music for the soundtrack to the TV series Boss, and then that was it. Uh, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to mention that because uh, he's one of my favorite musicians. I love I love this particular album, his self-titled one, and I love um, Talk Talks album, Lapping Stock, which is their final album. Um, yeah, really, really kind of like important albums for me. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Poor old Mark Ellis is gone. Um, Thank you for the music. Um, so, I'll just make sure that I'm actually streaming. I am streaming. <laughs> I'm recording and the mic is coming through. I've been recording for three minutes. So, the couple of bits of administrivia that I need to do. Um, yesterday, during the Q&A session with Zimpaluxy, um I made a mistake. Uh, so, we were talking about we're talking about my desktop environment, um, like the, my workflow and the programs that I use. And at some point I had to mention, well I didn't have to, but I mean I just, ha I, I mentioned <laughs> that, I mentioned that the window manager that I use here is Fluxbox. And then I mentioned about um, the window manager that Martin's Mosaico um, showed me at Handmade Con. Uh, this was his preferred one. Uh, I think he's since stopped, um, moved to a different one now. But uh, yesterday I said that the window manager was called Awesome. And that was wrong. The actual window manager that Martin's used at the time and showed me how to make on was called i3. So I just wanted to sort of make sure that that was uh, corrected. Uh, so that was Administrivia Part 1. Uh, Ministry Review Part 2, oh yeah, the uh, video quality, right. Um, I recently had to um, kind of redo my OBS config. Um, I essentially re realised that it was, it was, it had stopped working, right, OBS would sort of just crash. Um, and it seemed to be triggered by, did I mention this on stream? I can't remember if I mentioned it. <laughs> um, it. It was sort of, this crashing bug um, was seemed to be triggered by an update to system D um, so whatever happened in there seemed to trigger this particular bug and it was just like OBS would launch and it would just crash straight away um, so I kind of tried to try to move the config out of the way so I could just, just like start with a fresh config and that fixed it so it worked with, that, with a fresh config uh, I was I was planning on trying to like merge in my old config with the new thing, but I just ended up sort of scrapping the old totally and just redoing it. So I redid it, but I did the settings wrong. I did like the uh, the video scaling 
and the canvas size wrong. Uh, so the recordings ended up being 1080p as opposed to 1440, which, um, which we usually have. Um, well, I've now corrected that, so this should be fine now. And hopefully Twitch is also receiving the, the stream okay. Because we, we realize that they can only receive at 1080p. So with a bit of luck, this is being scaled down for the stream. But the actual recording should be re should be being recorded at 1440. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all the admin is here. It's on with the stuff. Um, yesterday I started, uh, did a couple of streams yesterday. The first stream um, was entitled Inclusion Rules. Same as today's, same as this stream. But you can see. Uh, Press the programming is C, day 149. <laughs> Cinema conflict power passing get inclusion rules. Uh, run day one five one here, and it's the same title. Um, I'll just explain what I was trying to achieve, uh, what I did, and uh, what I'm going to do now. So what I was trying to achieve was basically get the include file, including uh, the permission stuff to work um, and my thinking was that I'd basically be having to create a little sort of rules array essentially so you know like how I'm pushing stuff on so I'm, I'm pushing tokens onto the token things and I'm, pu I'm pushing like groups of tokens onto the token set um, pushing pushing strings onto the tree, pushing scopes on, you know, all that kind of stuff. I was thinking that I'd need to be, for these guys, I'd need to be pushing some rules onto a an array, like the other things. And I was thinking that I'd have to somehow communicate, um, somehow store in those rules what type of stuff these are, right? So I was thinking I'd have to store the the fact that a person is a scope, that a medium is a scope, that a project is a scope, and that a default medium is a string. Right, I was thinking that that's, that's what I'd have to do. So essentially, in order to kind of facilitate that, I created this array of conflict type fields. Right, I created this thing. So all it does is it just kind of ma it just marries up identifiers with field types, right? Conflict identifiers with field types, um, and that itself, I was thinking of what was I thinking of doing with them? In fact, I don't think I was thinking it was yeah, I wasn't thinking of doing anything special with those because they're already. They're already in this struct together. So I'm just using an array of this struct. So I was thinking I could pair them up here globally and then wherever they get used. So for example, in the edit type specs function, I was thinking when I push a type spec field, they could use um, they could use those config type fields there, essentially. Right, so there's one example, and there's that. So they're both pulling out of the that array. Um, then I was thinking, when I come to do these rules, I would put push on the rules um, by indexing into this conflict type fields uh, to to grab the type and the ID essentially. Because for some reason, I thought that that was going to be necessary. I thought I'd need that information, like what these guys are. But I don't think I do need that information anymore. I mean, there w there's a bug, um, which I couldn't I couldn't figure out what the bug was. Right, um, I was kind of halfway through it, halfway through investigating this thing, um, and then postponed the to the rest of the investigation t till today. Um, I don't think that I need that anymore. Um, 
so I'm going to I'm going to revert all of that and just make the rules only using these fields just as the identifier. Now the reason that I think I can do that is essentially when we get one of these scenery, when we get one of these include files what we're going to be doing is tokenizing the whole lot right so for anything that's a valid token well actually even like stuff that's not even a valid token like um, well I think everything here is actually valid but I think what what would happen is we just tokenize the whole thing right only making sure that it is well it's not even syntax correct even it's just like because <laughs> that happens when, it, when we do the pass so all that would happen is we would tokenize it and then after tokenizing it we would be down here so we call this tokenize function we'd be given a set of tokens back <clears throat> um, bearing in mind that um, before we actually do the tokenization, we will have to. Well, I mean, it could even be after. Honestly, it doesn't really. It doesn't matter when we do it. I don't think. Um, or does it? Yeah, it doesn't matter if we do it before or after this call. Um, essentially, what would happen is we'd have to first of all pass the rules, right? So we'd pass the rules in, figure out what the rules are, push, pushing them onto the thing, onto our array. And then when we call scope tokens, right, we'd have to pass the rules to this function. Um, now, in doing that, we would then be obviously calling scope tokens. So we come in and would be essentially like passing through it passing through as we, as we already are we'd know where we are in the actual scopes like in, t in terms of what our parent scope is we'd know where we are we'd know also as we go through we'd know, we'd know whether the current thing is a field in the is a valid field within the scope that we're in right and to get the field all you have is just the identifier right so it'd be literally just this so when you say do you see a person here it looks up in the current in the uh, current type spec and it just kind of determines what that is from the type spec right so then as we go through as we we see if we, if, if it is a field if it is in the type spec we'd then be able to do a check somewhere down here. I'm not exactly sure where it would be. Um, but we'd have to be able to do a check to see if the if we have any rules and if the specified and if the current field is is in our rules. Right, is in our committed rules. Um, and if so, then we can push one on right well we'd, we'd pass pass the assignments and push it on so we would get the information about the field the field type from here right and that'll just that'll just comes through as a as an effect of what like how we've done this whole thing And I think that should all just work, <laughs> right? You know, if you if you're not given a set of rules, then you can you don't need to perform that check, and you just you just treat everything as if it's as if you need to pass it in and stick it into the scope trees. But if you have been passed some rules, 
then you just see if that thing, right, project and default medium is in the is in the rules. And then if it is then you're sorted. <laughs> And I feel fairly sure that this would actually cover everything. So yeah, to that end, I'm going to revert the revert that array uh, where is it? It's above here, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going, to, I'm going to revert this array and I'm just going to create the little rule structs and make this thing pass no, pass these guys and push these rules on. Right, that's that's all I think we need to do. Um, we don't need to marry these guys up because we get that information from that um, get field call. So let's go. Let's go early. Let's go early. Thirty-two hours. We're gonna go back back in the past here, guys. Thirty-two hours ago. Well, it did build, and it ran. That's perfect. Also, it's a bit, it's a bit, um, it's kind of a bit of a cheat that um, I've worked out another way to do this thing. <laughs> I think I've worked out the better way, or the 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 way that's appropriate. But it would have been kind of cool if we could have wor worked through that that stuff and figured out what the bug was. But I suppose we'll have more opportunities to do that in the future. Oh, I'll tell you what, actually. This has changed completely. <laughs> yeah, right, so I don't exactly want that. <laughs> Wow, really? So that was 32 hours, so that was... No, 15. Let me go back. Let's just try and go back at 24 hours. That builds. And that tokenizes in the same way. Does this run? No, it doesn't. So what is happening? Is this because the unit time specs is doing that? Yeah, it is. figuring out where to go to. <laughs> I mean I could just rewrite it all but I'm just a bit reluctant to do that because I might have written these guys wrong. Let's just undo. Field could be handy, so I could do with rewriting that. Print type spec was called would be calling that. Here we go. So it's not it's not too bad, not too far back. So yeah, that's it. And then you just delete that, this struct, that array rather. just quickly. Um, what was it in? 
print type spec, wasn't it? Yeah, this thing, I'm just going to make that into a print field. Config type field. strings I don't think I'd made a mess of made a mess of this function I think this was okay <laughs> saying that I would do this differently wasn't I? Maybe like that. Do that, do that, and then finally do that. Yeah, so that is what I want. Let's just do I call this anywhere? I coloured it, didn't I? So print type specs should print the type specs. So yeah, this guy here, I was sort of thinking colorizing it. Sight on. I don't think I care about printing the tokens anymore because I think we're pretty confident that that's okay. I think we just need to keep an eye on the scope tree, really. my favourite song by the way on this album Alive 1895 to 1915 20 years it's one short life This is going to go, actually, isn't it? Yeah, this is kind of interesting. I, I reckon that you could actually just do that wherever you fancy. I mean, there if you want. Probably. Because <laughs> you've already set you've already set the pairs up, which is what you want. The token set is just um, the full on set and we're never passing T to anything here. So I think this would be a reasonable thing to do. Just double check. I mean it's not really that important. But it's just a bit of a. Um, it's just something that we have to do. Um, in terms of you know just just iterate moving through this this token tokens uh, array. What 
this token is contained? It contains a file, doesn't it? Yeah. That's another thing we need to check as well. We need to, when you see an include, you want to see if we've already got a set of tokens for that file. Let's see what to do for that actually. Deduplicate include files. So just reuse like the tokens that you've already tokenized. <laughs> Well, it's kind of like you just pass pass the tokens to this parent to this scope tokens call. Uh, yeah, and interestingly, you can have yeah you could pass different sets of rules though. So that's kind of cool. You can use the same tokens, right? <laughs> but if you set a different lot of rules on the include, <laughs> I mean you probably won't want to do this because it's a bit weird. But you can. You could set a different set of rules and then it gets included differently somewhere else. <laughs> okay, so we need, uh, we've come in here now. Um, and we've passed, what have we passed? We've passed up to here, haven't we? And then we should be expecting a an open brace or a thing. Yeah, so unfortunately, I mean, I sort of feel like I kind of feel like we need to be doing the same essentially a loop within this for within this main for loop which kind of feels a bit sketchy to me because you could end up in a situation where you somebody's forgotten to put this closing scope and if you're still iterating within the in, in, interior for loop could get dicey maybe not I don't know let's see what happens let's go for it um, so let's call it pass include rules. And we want it to return a set of rules. So rather than departing the assignments, you just do that. We need a struct for the config include rules. I mean, maybe the tokenizer actually needs to contain rules. Just in the sense of because the token the tokens thing itself, oops, this token things contains files. Oh yeah, because I was trying to, yes, I was I said that you could do, you could use the same set of tokens with a different set of rules. Essentially, what I'm thinking here is how do you how do you initialize your rules <laughs> thing. Like what? What are you pushing it pushing onto? So it seems like. Fifth, you need the rule. 
rule set. You know, if you've got a rule set. I know the, it's only gonna be this current function actually, scope token, because it's gonna need the, the uh, rule set. Yeah, so that this thing would pass down the rule, mind you. Ah, actually. Yeah, just don't bother pu don't bother pushing it on at all. So it's not it's not really a push as such. It's just a you just initialize a set of rules, right? <laughs> and then you uh, pass that like so and then once it's done that's it the rules are no longer applicable to anything else so they can just disappear i think that's the way to do it yeah so pass include rules is going to be setting some include rules So it's going to be, well, it's going to be a rule, isn't it? It's going to be a number of rules, but it's going CRT. That's that's too good to miss. Right, we're gonna do a null first of all. I think we might need a null, but we might not need a null. I'll see as we go as we go through. I'll see, I'll see if I need to check that. Right, and we are going to support allows and denies. I mean, that would be the only reason for having the null, by the way. <laughs> I mean, if it's all just allow, then you sort it. You just do whatever you like. I want to use the word scheme. So let's do it. That's fine. So then we need the pass thingamajig thingamajig, which is going to return full on rules. Oh, oh, it defaults to an int. I didn't realize that you, it defaulted to anything. I don't want to call it permissions also. 
Let's stick with that. I'm not departing that, that thing. I wonder if that was what was happening with the, the other guy. Mind you, we were crashing, wasn't it? It wasn't that we were actually, you know, encountering the error, reporting it, and finishing, okay. So. token is if token is token semicolon then return null I can't do that though can I? I can't return null I mean, I suppose I could just return the result, couldn't I? Yeah, that's a good point, actually. How do I indicate that this has failed? <laughs> yeah, I need a way to do that, which is unfortunate. I suppose you just return a return a pointer to the result, a pointer to the rules, and you just say that you got through them. Ah, oh, I don't know. Let's um, let's just do a brawl <laughs> success. It's a bit cheesy, but. It'd give us something, wouldn't it? this very often really. I often have things returning pointers to things but in this case I think it is appropriate to make it not return a pointer and just return the actual the actual thing because it's literally only going to be used here and then we're out of there. So yeah um, we have to see if the success, if yeah. So if there isn't, if it doesn't succeed, it said that's just talking about. Oh, there could be different kinds of success, couldn't there? I suppose we could just sort of say syntactically valid. 
if it's not valid if it's not valid then we just say syntactically not correct and we just we're out we're out of there fruitcake tree yeah so this is what we do Syntactically. Oh. oh yeah, I haven't got the thing open. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Not too much anyway. Oops. So if a token is an open brace. to fall we fall looping up to the T counts right like this guy's doing and if we encounter the token open brace uh, sorry the token closed brace which is which is this thing here I mean, we're essentially re rewriting script tokens here, actually, aren't we? <laughs> I suppose one way you could say it, actually, you're only going to have rules, right, if you're passing the include. So you could also sort of say... Rather than do rather than pass include rules. Rather than calling pass include rules here. You just let it continue. <laughs> you know, you sort of say Oh no, you couldn't let it continue, could you? Because you need to be able to pass, pass those rules. Well, I, was, I guess you could sort of. Token is an open brace. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we could just do that in there, couldn't we? <laughs> if you want to be a bit fancy about it. Could we do that? Yeah, it seems like I could. So we can comment that, dude. <laughs> it looks totally backwards, which is kind of fun, actually. <laughs> Let's not do it that way, because that's just... It just looks too silly. You want to be explicit that you're actually incrementing that there. So if it's an open brace, then for that, you want to be expecting a, so you want to set the token. Yeah, right, current field is in spec. This is interesting actually, isn't it? I mean, I guess we could do that and, you know, do the actual full thing. Wow, this is weird. I've never, never used the mouse in thingamajig before. So if current field is in spec, if we've got a spec at all. Yeah, I need a way. Because I don't know where this is going to end up. I need, I need a way to Well, actually, maybe it doesn't matter, actually. <laughs> like even if they put some bullshit in this this allow. Oh, well, actually, it's, it's allow. It's, uh, oh, that's a point, yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, the types, but we don't really care about the types, but do we? Because all it can be is allow or deny. to expect so where is it expect token so we're expecting an identifier It's a bit unfortunate that I return the result. I'm not going to use it, but that's just how the cookie crumbles, isn't it? I mean, actually, I could also, well, what do you call it? Token? I didn't find it. now. Well, I mean, I can look at the backdrop function, can't I? <laughs> you pass a token and a string. Tokens. Oh, it's passing the entire tokens, is it? <laughs> Let's see if we get the current index. I don't think I can do that. Um, because I make a run to pass the Current index. Another time. Yeah, you're going to pass the identifier. So it's not token equals. What are the, what are the matching functions? Pairs match contrib pair. 
strings match, it takes a string and a string. Strings match LB0. Passing the token. Oh! I don't see that at all. Because uh, a token contains. Oh, oh shit! Actually, yeah, it does. No, I do need that. <laughs> yeah, because we haven't figured out what the actual type is yet, <laughs> or what the ID. <laughs> shit, that's unfortunate. So we're passing the T. What was it? ID? Type. Contents. That's what it was. Yeah, this was it. That's why I needed the null. It was like it strings match that and the current rules thing about it is set to null. Then we can set the the rules type to be allow, essentially. Actually, it should match allow. Um. This is another way it can fail, actually, isn't it? So it's not syntactically invalid. It's just that it's. <laughs> Jesus. It's just uh, kind of typically, you know, it's <laughs> pertaining to the type, the include type, it's just invalid in here. I suppose you just, yeah, what do you do?
Yeah, I'm really not sure. Let's do some more ifs here. Um, could we do need this? Then it's just to depart the assignment. How do you depart the assignment exactly? So if the token is an identifier, or if the token is a closing brace. Okay. Otherwise, return fail. Perfect. So we have to be expecting an identifier. Oh no, we don't actually, do we? <laughs> it's it's if token is, isn't it? Yeah, it's this thing again. <laughs> Jesus. Is it? Yeah, if token is a token identifier, it could be a token identifier. Token is T to identify, yeah. And what is that exactly? Ah. <laughs> then we don't need that because we we'll, we will have the tokens match, won't we? Our token is. Well, it's not token is, is it? It's token. What was that match from? Strings match. That's the one that I just did, wasn't it? Pairs match against moments. Hmm. What's the thing with the token? So token equals. Yeah, right. Token equals. So yeah, I could use could use token equals. So if token is that. There shouldn't be any scopes within the include actually, should there? You know, so we shouldn't we should only find an identifier or a closing brace, yeah. So if token is an identifier syntactically invalid. We hit an identifier. If we hit a closing brace, then we get out of there. So, if token is identifier, then we say What was that called again? I thought it was matches, wasn't it? <laughs> Yeah. 
that can go as well, but uh, string stiff is LV0, I think. Yeah. Strings, but no, it's not that. Oh, actually, hold on. Strings differ is a different function entirely. It was strings match that I was wanted to get rid of. It was this guy I was wanted to go get rid of. Tokenize. Oh yeah, I deleted all this yesterday, didn't I? <laughs> Token equals. Okay, fine. So if the token is an identifier, the ready token is, yeah, the token is all out. Else if token equals deny, else deep part assignment. And we just we could warn as well, couldn't we? But let's do that. So let's let's actually say um, this. Do I have print C? I do have print C. And I have the uh, this color. So we have the tokens, so we could conceivably Oh no, we're, we're passing out of Oh, actually, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> So we could use the file name from this guy
Is it a null terminated thing? Yeah, it is. So here we want to be able to say bail basically is what we want to do. Yeah, that is it, isn't it? It's just like if the Result uh, scheme, did I call it? Then bail. Depart the depart the assignment, I reckon. Oh, hold on, we need, to, we need to somehow get out of the entire scope, don't we? <laughs> ah, that's, that's unfortunate. Gracefully, <laughs> um, yeah. Let's just uh, take a few minutes break, and we will continue, um, and then do a bit more. Probably till eight. Well, what, what should we do? We could do another fifty minutes. Do another fifty minutes. Get some food, sandwich or something, um, <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, do another couple of hours after that. So yeah, bear with me. Here's the heroines.
<clears throat> right, I spotted. Yeah, I see this then going overloaded. Let me just have a quick look at this in my settings. Uh, it's gonna to change. Oh, right. Okay, so probably won't be able to change anything. Um, higher equals less CPU. Let's try fast then. And main. I can't remember what we used to be on. You see, so. Yeah, I mean, fat, it sort of looks familiar. I'm not sure whether we were on the rate, what kind of rate control we were on. I don't know what ABR and CRF are. Maybe that'll be fine. Because what, what, when was it? it? I think it was just when, I mean, this is the normal scene. Let's just switch over here. Let's switch back and that was like that. I don't know. Who cares? Does not matter. Uh, so a couple of ideas. Um, <clears throat> remember I was getting all like getting in a tears about <laughs> returning stuff. I'm going to change this to make a config include rule. <laughs> I make this return a just a a return code. So it takes the rules in like so, points to the rules. Uh, it doesn't return the rules at all. It's just going to be pushing onto the rules when we when we get there. So syntactic value equals true. We return the well. I guess we'll see the result. Well, actually, no. It's not going to be that anymore. Um, This will definitely have to um, so the we can have success. We can have um, syntax error, and we can have so syntax error means that the outer guy will have to. Bail, so just completely bail. Uh, RC, the next error. Um, we can also have an invalid identifier, right? Uh, which would mean this. It'd mean like if you've passed something that isn't allow or deny, essentially. So it would be it'd be here. It'd be down down here. Maybe that. And then the other thing would be um, it's like a scheme mixture or something. Right. And all that means is here, right. If we see an if we see an allow, where are we? If we see an allow, and we already understand the scheme to be CRT deny, then we need to actually just return RC scheme mixture. Similarly here, right? So. Pass include rules is going to take. I mean, it doesn't take that anymore. It's taking this. And then it'll be kind of like switching on the pass include rules. Uh, and also some of these cases might be able to be just um, combined. So 
So the RC success, RC scheme mixture, RC syntax error. And what was the what was the fourth one? Invalid identifier. Syntactically valid, so we'd like to want to return RC syntax error. Uh, and if we get through it, probably just return RC success. Uh, and here, in terms of probably return RC syntax error. Well, error with one R oh, twice now. Did I call it identifier? <laughs> I'll see invalid identifier. What is it saying? It doesn't. All oh, right. Yeah. I see. Should be fine. Pop that away just for now. And this stuff down here, tokenizing and scope tokens, that's going to happen within the success case. The basic idea here is that upon seeing an include identifier, we pass in its scope tokenize. I think we covered all of that, I think. That seems all right. And as I say, um, the, some of these might be able to just collapse down. Uh, but the parse include rules um, now returns an RC and takes takes the rules. What we need to be able to do is bail gracefully. So in order to bail gracefully, what we should do is the following. Expect to sign. So we've got down that, that, and then here. So we want to be passing in, I think we want to pass in to include rules, the index of the identifier token. Is that right? I mean, we... If you already... So it's put in the side, yeah. Um, I think actually all you do is, we've got down to here. I reckon what you actually do is you just subtract three from the current, to current thingamajig. And then you just sort of say, that's the start, that's the first thing. Uh, and then you just depart. When you want to depart that, that assignment, 
you just set the set the current token index to be that and then depart that whole assignment. I think that's what you just do. So that's it and then when you want to depart when you want to bail, bail gracefully what you do is you say I think it's just wherever you are isn't it um, yeah it's literally just it's just the T current tokens <laughs> well you just say the T current index is equal to the include token index right and then you just, yeah, I think that's all you do. Oh, actually, um, yeah, include token index is kind of what you want. And then you want to depart. Right, and then depart assignment expects it to be on uh, a token identifier or a closed brace, but it expects to be on the start, and if you're at the start, it sort of well. That's where it expects to be, essentially. <laughs> and depart include assignment. This is doing the minus minus three, but it's not actually going to be necessarily what we actually want. I mean, you could sort of have a depart assign. Uh, you could actually say you could have a depart string assignment that takes the include token index. Sorry, depart depart include assignment that takes the so it's the identifier index. The include identifier token index. Right, I think that'd be fine. Then same here. Because if you see that, I don't think, I don't think this this whole thing should be at all valid. But it should be reasonable to continue to parse the file, so you can see if the rest of the file is all right. And this is invite identifier. So yeah, if it's if it's not an allow or deny, then you can just you just got to get out of there. Let us just pop on laughing stock. A bit more of Mark Collis. The unfortunate thing is that this is a bit sensitive to where parse include rules gets called. So I might have to be careful of that. Let's just keep it in mind. We might be okay, but let's keep it in mind. Um, also, what does this do? Does this actually, can this return a syntax error? Yeah, it can. This can return a syntax error. So 
so really we could say if this is true then return scheme mixture otherwise return syntax error This is for that that if identifier so we're expecting that otherwise if it's quiz and brace otherwise we return a syntax error and if we return a syntax error we're just we're just getting out of there anyway so uh, we can't continue so we know that we, d we don't need to do anything special with departing the assignment so if we've got token identifier if token equals allow, if rule scheme is equal to the deny, then we need to return out of here doing all this business. Otherwise, we can just set the scheme to be CRT allow, which might mean just resetting it as it was already set, but it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, these two are very, very similar. They seem like prime candidates for compression oriented programming we've got the index sorry we've got the identifier which is allow or deny we've got through all of this stuff and we're now incrementing past the identifier and at this point we should expect to be getting uh, an equal sign and then we should expect a string and then after that we should expect a semicolon and then we can go back round okay. I think actually, yeah. If we go, if we get the closing brace, then all you do is you just return success, don't you? <laughs> or do you? you no, know, you increment past it. Yeah, that'll be it probably. So here we go. So we want to be expecting. Let's just pull one of these dudes up. And what, what did I say? I said we were expecting a, a sign. Uh, free scope tree. So these should just be saying return syntax error, shouldn't they? token assign syntax error then we want to be expecting a string right uh, and here I think we just oh actually no we're building the rules aren't we <laughs> so we do actually need to know we need to need to be able to see yes so what, what we're doing is we pass in this string so we're going to have this string we need to then go through all of the fields well we need to actually pass out of the string we will need to, well, right for this thing here we're going to have one single string which is going to contain person for this thing here we have one single string which is going to contain medium and then for this thing down here if I'm pointing at the right thing, we're going to have project. Uh, well, it's going to be it's just going to be one string, right? <laughs> so it's going to be a string that contains this and all of this stuff, right? 
So we're going to have to actually pass out of this thing uh, an actual an actual rule. So we'll be, all we'll be doing is we'll be sort of seeing if this first thing is a. I mean, it's essentially it's kind of tokenizing this little bastard actually. <laughs> Although I'm not going to do, I'm not going to actually tokenize it because tokenization requires that you pass a file, and this isn't a file. Yeah, it might not be. It might not be worth changing the tokenizer to uh, support buffers. So, expect that. Then we want to expect a string, right? to essentially pass rule string essentially is what we wanted to do. And we're going to be Probably wanting to be passing the rules, aren't we? So you pass the rules when you pass the rule string. And that, that guy just does its thing, I suppose. So if we get there, we've got the string, and then we should be expecting a semicolon. need to bother returning the rule because we don't care about it all we care about is setting it Seems fine. Uh, yeah, we can pass the old token, can't we? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs>
slash be correct. Um, and identifiers are always strings, right? Which is what these are. These essentially are really. These have to be identifiers. They can't be a. They can't be a number. Again, I'm sort of tokenizing, right? I do have a choice actually. So this is something that I saw Martin Cohen um, do. So in a tweet that he recently did, he had this syntax which is like this. Um, I'm not exactly sure what he's up to, <laughs> but I think it make he's making a language of some sort. Um, but he had this syntax for referring to members. Now I don't have that anywhere in here. So it might not make sense for me to use it because it's just a whole new thing. Nobody does that. It doesn't it doesn't it's not it's not a thing that you can figure out. I could conceivably do that. And then it'd make well, it wouldn't make passing that much easier. It'd just mean that I could say, I can use my while is, while character is, um, while I'd identify a character. Let's, yeah, let's just stringify that first, right. Basically, hmm, it's really che cheesy because it's like a, it's an interior for loop. Right. We can't get out of this, and we want to be saying. Valid identify character. And that's going to be the value at base. Well, actually, it's probably not going to be that, even it's going to be that. What does that look like? Result string is undeclared. Rule string. Taking the car. 
why is it taking a car star? <laughs> why doesn't it just take a car? Not found thing the jig. Hang on a second. There. Right, there's just no need to be passing a pointer to a car when you're talking about an actual car. <laughs> Sure, this is the way to do, isn't it? You don't pass it. No, you don't pass it like that. <laughs> I think I might just make sure that it's still building after just making that little change. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't think we're doing anything yet are we I mean we kind of are actually include rules so uh, we're going to increment i we're going to increment the s length right I shouldn't be using I. Oh, actually, it could be using I. Yes, it should. Be. In fact, it could and it should be using I. Because we do actually need to make sure that we don't screw up any of these loops. Yeah, so while I is less than the rule string content length. And uh, this S length, right. And then, we want to, then what we want to do is we want to go through the thingamajigs and essentially say uh, is this thing <laughs> is this thing that we've just found here a known identifier <laughs> essentially um, do I have that Here we go, get config identifier from the token. Yeah, I mean, that's one way of doing it, isn't it? <laughs> get config identifier from string yes let's do that
Ah, actually, yeah, uh, so it's, uh, what was it? Um, Matthew and Eva to go live with Taiji Demo, uh, Taiji, Taiji Game Dev, and John Blow going live with game programming, movement code stuff. Cool. So if the if we manage to get a config identifier from string, then we push the rule, and we need the push rule function. I don't think we have anything, do we? We don't have any, like... No, we don't have the fit rule, push rule, or anything. Uh, it's the complicated clue rules. say we can just add eight rules. Is it block count or block size I usually use? I think block size looks more familiar. Yeah. I need a few rules as well. Oh, that's a point, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I was thinking before about having to like free, free rules and stuff. Well, <laughs> you know, in terms of like what we could return. I mean, I know that we've kind of changed how we're gonna how we're doing pass rules, passing the rules now, and we've figured that returning. Some sort of error code is what we actually want. But I was talking about like returning an actual config include rules or in returning a pointer to it and include rules. Now, since we're pushing on, we need to free them, right? So you might, so it's kind of make, it's no skin off our nose um, as to whether we actually, um, what do you call it? As to whether we initial as to whether we allocate the actual the actual full structure itself. Does that make sense? So you, so you put this whole thing on the heap rather than being on the stack as we currently have it. Right. This is good on the stack. Yeah, it doesn't matter. 
um, I mean, one thing you do have to do actually <laughs> is. You know, who do you make responsible for freeing the rules? I guess, like, if it ever fails, if it, if, it, if it ever needs to return anything other than RC success, it probably should free the rules, right? In which case, this, this person should be responsible in the success case for freeing the rules. Because it'll have to pass the rules here, right? And that's the only place that it needs to use the rules. Because once they've been passed, we're, uh, we're all, all gravy, basically. So yes, so in all the cases that we're not returning RC success, we need to actually free the rules. successful one yeah I think that should be reasonable so we're back into this this story here pass rule string push rule rules ID be able to initialize that right there. No, I expected I expected parenthesis before ID. Yeah, okay. Fine. So do you need to bracket that so we can actually do the test. So yeah, if it's not added null, they push rules. And let's just double check what this actually returns again. So yeah, if it, if it finds the thing, it returns i. Otherwise it returns added null, which is perfect. So pass rule string. Now, I could test this. Before I go on to do the this more complex uh, string here, I mean, in some ways, actually, no, this should be dead easy. What does this take? It takes a buffer. Oh, right. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, in some ways, we could actually... Yeah, the rule string is a content, so yeah, it's a string.
Uh, yeah, we need uh, the actual index into the string, don't we? Don't we? <laughs> Yes, we do. Yeah. Pause. I suppose we could do it in his white space, couldn't we? <laughs> I suppose one fancy thing that you could do is put the skip white space up here because I don't want to have a situation where I skip the white space and then I just romp on, but we've actually reached the content length. The alternative is, well also, um, well actually it wouldn't matter, would it? If I were to, if I have to do the push, the skip white space at the end, and then it increments I, and then it does the check, it won't, it won't matter if we've, Gone, gone above the length because the eyes just dead in the water. It's literally just used for this for this loop. Let's let's skip it at the end. So,
it actually. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but <laughs> since everything other than a valid identifier character should be skipped, well, because it, I don't know, I'm sort of saying like, is that is valid identifier character? You know, you see the P is, and then he continues pass. What I'm kind of leaning towards suggesting is just essentially don't care about this actual syntax. So you can write whatever the hell you like, really. <laughs> I mean, in some ways, you know, you could you could end up writing this if you wanted to. <laughs> You know, and you can just you could just pick your pick what syntax you wanted. You could do that if you want. And I don't think there should be a problem with that. That just that might just work. It's kind of weird, but. Okay. Obviously, ideally, you'd like to tokenize it. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Everybody's going to be checking what checking that they're not zipping past the rule string. This guy is going to be checking only that one character, and then this guy is be, yeah this guy's checking that. So yeah, that seems to be fine to me. <laughs> So where are we calling pass rule string? If anywhere. Here we are. So we're calling it here. And we're freeing the rules and returning that if, if we need it. So yeah, I mean, this could be syntactically incorrectly initialized like this, but that should get called. Should we try running it and just see what happens? So we expect to take an identifier called Project Risky, Project Risky. So we've got a couple of Project Riskies, 228 and 228. Sorry, 224 and 228. That's, that's, that's the guy down there. That's a point wherever we return something like that. So it's a semicolon at the close brace. I think that might have just been it. Actually. Um, what is this happening here? Return success. And 
that is including the token index. If token is to if token is token then go on. <laughs> So we're going to increment past that. I'll see token open brace and that. I think we should be returning from all the different things here, shouldn't we? So return there. Return all the cases. Return here, return there. Return here. Could I get here? <laughs> Could I even get out of that? If token semicolon or token open brace. Yeah, I don't think we should be able to get down to here. Although we need to return something. So yeah, just past that. So, tell you what, let's just prohibit, at least try and prohibit, mediums from being Past. Do we see them showing up? We do still see them showing up because we're not checking. So we've got the field ID. So if, if current field is in spec, then we say if field Yeah, no rules or field is permitted. So if there's no rules, it will just go go straight in. If there are rules, then it goes and checks if it's field field is permitted rules. Um, not that. Set past the field as well, don't we? Uh. Well, actually, let's do the um, field ID. And it's passing the field as the second parameter, wasn't it? Oh, nice one. So we've got an invalid field. 
got viewers in Spain. I think this is. <laughs> Heat reset for free. Yeah, right. So I think this is exactly the. <laughs> this is exactly the error we actually had in the other situation. Which is kind of interesting. Inspect, read size out. He views after free, yeah, interesting. On uh, the current fields inspect call. That's interesting. Yeah, I do wonder what that is. Um, but I'll tell you what, let's take a break, get some food. Just a quick sandwich. I haven't had a sandwich today, have I? No. <laughs> take a quick sandwich. Um, and then debug this see if this needs debugging actually <laughs> we'll see whether there's well i mean there is something to debug obviously because that's not right so yeah take a break and then we will continue to debug so thanks very much for now here as in heroines see you shortly